Alright then gang, so now we know how to install packages, I'd like to install one called Express for our project. But before we do that, let's just quickly talk about what Express is and why we'd use it. So currently we've written all of this code right here to serve up a few different HTML pages. And that's fine in this case, this really wasn't that hard to do. But if we start adding more complex routes or handling post requests from forms and generally adding more server side logic, then it will get quite messy and quite hard to organize. Now, Express is a framework that helps us to easily manage our routing, requests, server side logic and responses in a much, much more elegant way. And it makes our code easier to read and update and extend. Now, you don't have to use Express. You can do everything using raw node as we have been doing so far, but Express is really good. It saves us time, allows us to write clean code, and it comes with some extra features that really, really help us out. So I'm just here on the Express page on the NPM website. And down here, we can see, first of all, how to install it. We're gonna do that in a second, but also quickly how to use it as well. So we basically set up an Express app, and then from there, we can set up some routing. So this one right here is in its simplest form. It's responding to any kind of get request, which is the kind of request we've been making when we've been putting some kind of URL up here in the address bar. And this is responding to a get request to just forward slash, and we're doing that right here, yep. And all this is doing is taking in a callback function and it's sending a response. So it's quite similar, but as we add more routes, you're gonna see that this becomes much easier than handling routes this way, okay? So let's install it first of all, npm install express, that's what we need to do. So open up your terminal and I'm gonna cancel out of this process, then say npm install express like so, and that should add it to your dependencies. Remember, if you're using an old version of Node, use the save flag, which is double dash save at the end of that, and it's going to save it to your dependencies right here. We can see Express has been added. Okay then, so now we have Express installed. Let's go ahead and create an Express app. Now to do this, I'm gonna create a new file. I will keep this server file here in case we want to compare the code between the two files later on, but I'm gonna create a new file for our Express app. And typically people call this file app.js, like so. So in here, the first thing we need to do is actually require Express. So I'm gonna say const express equals require express. Okay, so now we've required that, we need to set up an express app and that is really simple to do all we need to say is const app and set it equal to express and then invoke that so this right here returns us a function and we're storing that in express and all we're doing is invoking that function to create an instance of an express app which we're storing in this constant you can call this constant what you want but you know commonly people call it app all right then so the next thing we need to do is actually listen for requests. So much like we did over here, when we listened to port 3000, we need to do a similar thing over here. So I'm gonna say, listen for requests. And underneath that, I'm gonna say app.listen. And then we wanna to listen to port 3000. Now automatically, it infers that we want to use localhost, so we don't need to add anything else. Now this also returns us an instance of the server, much like this does over here when we create the server. And we could store it in a constant in case we wanna reuse that server later on for something else like WebSockets, but you don't need to, and I'm not gonna do that for the sake of this tutorial either. All right, so we've set up an Express app and we're now listening for requests at port 3000. Now, how do we actually respond to those requests? Well, all we need to do is say app, and then if you wanna listen for a get request, we can use the dot get method. And this takes in two arguments. The first argument is what path or URL you want to listen to. So if you wanna listen for forward slash about and respond to that, you just put in forward slash about, much like we did that for this case over here. Now, I just want to listen for requests to just forward slash, so the root of the domain, if you like. Now, the second argument is a function, and this function takes in a request and response object 
so that we can do something with those. So again, this contains information about the request, such as the URL and the method of the request, like get or post or something else. And then this right here, this is the response object, which we can use to send a response. Now, if you want to send a response, we can do the same thing as before, where we said things like response.write, and then we can write some HTML, and then we say response.end. But instead, if you want to, you can use a third method now, now that we're using Express, and that is called response.send. And the good thing about this method is that, first of all, it infers the type of content that we're trying to send to the browser, and it automatically sets the content type header. So this line of code over here, we don't need to do anymore because Express automatically works that out for us, dependent on the type of content we send back. Another benefit of this is that it also infers the status code, so we don't need to manually set that. There will be cases where we do want to manually set that, but a lot of the time it's going to set it for us. In this case, it's going to be 200 if we're sending back some HTML. So let's just send back a bit of HTML. I'm going to say p tag right here, home page, and then close that off. So now we need to run this file app.js instead of server.js. So let me do that. I'm going to say nodemon and this time app, and that's going to run this file. And then now if we go to just forward slash, we should see this response. So let's try that. So localhost 3000 forward slash, and we see homepage. And if we inspect that, we can see inside a P tag. Now, if I go to the network tab and I'm going to refresh so we can see this request localhost that we sent, we can see that the status code is 200. And also the content type has been automatically set to text HTML because it figured out that that's what we're sending right here. So that, my friends, is how easy it is to respond to a specific URL. Now, we do actually want to respond to several different URLs like we did over here, like forward slash about, for example. And we're going to do that going forward. And we're going to actually send back some HTML pages instead of just a string of HTML as well. Okay then, so we've seen how to respond to this single get request for forward slash, but if we go to any other kind of URL like forward slash about, then we don't get a page back. And that's because we don't have a route handler set up for that URL. So we can do that by just adding multiple of these different get handlers. So I'm going to do that by copying this dude and pasting it right down here. And this time we want to respond to a get request at the URL forward slash about and then we could just change this to about page and there we have it that's how simple it is we've responded to two different routes now so if i go to the browser again and go to forward slash about i should see about page and if i just go to forward slash i see home page now that's okay but again this isn't a great way to send html to the browser ideally we want to send an html file so we can keep all of our html in separate files now we already made all of those files over here. We have an about, an index, and a 404 page. So we just want to send those back to the browser. So how do we do that with Express? Well, dead simply. Let me first of all comment out these two things right here. And then for just forward slash, we want to send back the index page. So we can say response.send file. And then right here, we need a path to that file. So dot forward slash into the views folder, then forward slash again, index.html. Now there is a slight problem with this. This path right here is not meant to be a relative path, or rather, if it is a relative path, we need to tell Express where is it relative from, because by default, it's going to look for an absolute path, the path from the root of our computer. So what we need to do here is pass a second parameter or second argument, which is an object, an options object, and we can specify what the root should be. What is this relative to? Now, this is just going to be the root of the project, which is this node crash course. And it's the same directory that this app.js file is in. Now, we know how to get the current directory. We can do that using underscore underscore do name that gets us the directory that we're currently in inside this file. So now we've said that the root should be this folder, node crash course, and then from there, this can be a relative path. So we're inside the project folder, then we go into the views folder, 
and then we get index.html, okay? So another way of doing this would be to use the path module, which is a core module in Node, to join together the dir name with the file path. But for now, we're just gonna use this way. So let me save that. And in fact, we'll do the same thing for the about handler down here. So let's copy that and paste it right here and change this to about.html instead. Okay, so now if we go to just forward slash, we're sending back this file. And if we go to forward slash about, we're sending back this file, okay? So let me save it and preview. If I refresh over here, we get the home page. And if I go to forward slash about, we should get the about page, which we do. So let me just quickly go to these different HTML pages. And what I'd like to do is just add in a little nav so we can link to one page from another. So I'm gonna do that underneath the H2 over here, do a nav and inside two links. So one for the home page, which is just forward slash and one for forward slash about. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the about file over here just so that we don't have to keep on typing out the address up in the address bar at the top and we can just click on one of these links on either of those pages. So let me cross that off and refresh over here and now we can see home page and about page and now we can just click on those, just makes it a bit easier to test those two different routes. So previously we saw how to do a redirect without express over here in the server.js code and all we did was match a case against a specific URL. We set the status code and then we set a header, which was the location. And that meant that the browser would relocate to forward slash about, and then we ended the response. So that redirected the user to the forward slash about route. So how do we do something similar in Express? Well, it's really easy. All we need to do is create another get handler for the URL that we want to redirect first of all. So let's say app.get and say we want to redirect users that go to forward slash about hyphen us. So we're gonna match against this URL. Then we fire a function when a request for this URL comes in. So request and response, we get access to those objects inside this function. And all we do now is say response dot redirect and where do we want to redirect to? Well, just forward slash about, and that is all there is to it. And under the hood, Express sends this response to the browser and forces it into a new request for forward slash about, and it also automatically sets the status code so we don't have to redo this. So let me now save this and make sure we're running this server, we are doing. So let me now preview this in the browser and go to this thing over here. So if we go to forward slash about us, then we can see now we get the about page, all right? So now this is working, dead simple to do. Okay, so we also saw previously that we could set up a 404 page, and we did that by just having a default case down here, which amended to the path 404.html. We set the status code, and then we sent back that file. So. We can do a 404 in Express really easily as well. And the way we do it is by saying app, and then this time we use a method called use. Now we use this method, use, to create middleware and fire middleware functions in Express. Now we're gonna learn much more about use and middleware later on, but for now, let me just flesh this out, and then I'm gonna explain it. So inside here, we fire a callback function, and this function also has access to the request and the response objects. Now, if someone goes to the wrong URL, ultimately what we wanna do is set the uh, status code to 404 and also send a file, which is this thing, 404, to the browser. So let's say response.send file. First of all, we've seen this up here and we're gonna do the same thing. So let's just copy those two arguments and paste them right down here and change this to 404. So that is gonna send this 404 page to the browser. Now then, how is this working? Well, the use function is going to fire for every single request coming in, but only if the request reaches this point in the code. So when we send a request in the browser, if we type something up here and hit enter, then Express is gonna run through this code top to bottom, and it's gonna look at each one of these get handlers. And if it finds a match, if the URL 
that a user has requested is matched against this thing right here. It fires that callback function. If it doesn't match, it carries on down the file. Now, if it matches, if inside we send a response to the browser like this, then Express no longer carries on down the rest of the code. So none of the other functions will ever fire, even if they match as well, because we've sent a response now. Now, if we don't match, then it's going to carry on to this. If we match, it's going to send a response. If we don't match, then it's going to carry on to this, etc. down the page. Now, if we get to the bottom at this point right here, if by this point there's not been a match, then it will go ahead and fire this function because this use method basically just says use this function for every incoming request. It's not scoped out to a particular URL, you know, something that we could type in here, like in the other ones over here. It's actually going to fire for every single request, regardless of the URL, if the code reaches this point, if we don't have a match up to here. And at this point, we're sending this 404 page to the browser. So let me just save this and test it out, first of all. And we're going to go to forward slash, then a load of garbage, press enter, and we get the 404 page. This works. Now, the position of this is important. It must go at the bottom over here because if it went somewhere near the top up here, above, for example, the about handler, then what's going to happen is if we go to forward slash about over here, the request is going to come in. Express is going to go through these handlers. Well, it doesn't match this one, so I'm going to carry on down here. And it gets to this and it fires it because this is not scoped to a particular URL. It fires for every single request. So it fires this function and we send a response to the browser. And remember, we said if we send a response to the browser, then it doesn't carry on with the rest of the code. So it's never even going to reach this about handler. So let me demo that. I'm going to go to forward slash about and we'll probably get this page, this 404 page, which we do. So that is why this should go at the very bottom over here. So then it's like a catch all. If nothing else matches, then we're going to send this 404 page to the browser. Now, at the minute, Express doesn't realize that this is actually any kind of error and that we're sending a 404 page. It's not going to look at this HTML file and say, oh, I'm going to guess that this is actually a 404 error. It doesn't do that. We have to, in this case, manually set a 404 error. So to do that, we can tack on the status method to the response right here and type in the status code 404. And then we can just tack on this to the end as well. We can chain it on because this method right here returns the response object itself. So we can just tack on that method at the end of it and that still sends the file for us. Only this time we've edited the status code to be 404. So if I save that, let's just check everything still works. Blah, 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 hit enter and it does. Awesome. So we know now how to set up an Express app how to set up different route handlers, redirects, and a 404 as well, as well as how to send back an HTML file as a response to the browser. Now, let's just quickly compare this code right here that we have to this old code, server.js. And I think you'll agree that this old code right here looks a lot more complex, uh, less readable. It would be harder to maintain and add to, I think, than this code right here. It looks a lot more elegant. We have our own function for each individual route where we can nest our own logic for each route. We can easily do redirects, easily do 404s. I think this is a lot more elegant. So I'm going to actually delete this server file because we're not going to use that going forward. Instead, we're going to stick with Express and this app.js file for future lessons. And next up, we're going to be looking at an alternative to HTML files whereby we can inject dynamic data and content into our different templates using a view engine.